What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about ovulations and ball pythons. Before we get into that, I did want to talk a little bit about the new shirt that I've got on. This is the Venom Life shirt. I got this from Brent from well, when we were at Tinley. Um, if you don't know about Venom Life, what they're doing is they're working with uh, venom extraction. So you, you've seen videos where they take the venom uh, from different venomous snakes. And what they can do is make anti-venom with that. And then they can use that anti-venom to help save lives. Um, so what they do is they're a company that donates 10% uh, every month of their profit uh, to charity. So that's a really awesome thing. Uh, but if you're looking for any Venom Life gear and you want to help represent their company, um, you can, uh, at checkout, when you place your order, if you want to get any type of gear or any type of stuff from them, use SFB10 and you save another 10% on top of that. So it's a pretty cool uh, company. Brent's an awesome guy. If you're not following him on Instagram, make sure that you guys do so. Follow Venom Life also. So let's get back to the ovulation. So we had an ovulation from one of our snakes. Uh, so if you don't remember, I'll link the video up above, but about a year ago, I think it was back in February of 2018, um, I got a call from the ASPCA. And what had happened was, um, somebody had taken a ball python and they put it with a rat, and they put them together in a Rubbermaid, and they set them next to a dumpster, uh, in, and this is in New Jersey, in February, in the middle of a nor'easter. So it was hailing and snowing, and I was away uh, on vacation. So some passerby or somebody happened to see this snake in the Rubbermaid sitting in the snow, and they called the police. The police came, took the snake, and they took it to ASPCA. The ASPCA really didn't have the means to care for it, and a friend of mine happened to work there, and she knew that I was in the ball python, so she called me and said, hey, this is the situation. Can you do something for the snake? And I said, absolutely. I didn't even know what, at the time I didn't know anything about the snake. I didn't know what it was, the sex of it, what kind it was, anything. I just said, sure, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of it since you guys can't, and we'll go from there, we'll figure it out, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So we got the snake, it ended up being a, an adult female spider ball python. So we got, she was uh, dehydrated, underfed, we got her all back together. Um, she's doing great, thriving, growing like crazy. So we just recently paired her with one of our males and she just went in ovulation. So it's a pretty cool story that you have a snake that was, if it wasn't found that night, it would have been dead by, by morning. Uh, but you take a snake in that kind of condition, you rehab it and now you're gonna be able to make it um, pass on you know, future generations from here. So it's a pretty cool story. Um, I really like this female, she's super nice and uh, she's a beautiful snake, very gentle. Um, so now she's gonna be a mom, hopefully, as long as the eggs um, you know, are all viable and they're fertile, then we'll be good to go. So what we're gonna look for is now that we have the ovulation, we're gonna wait for that pre-lay shed, and then we're gonna wait for the eggs after that. But let's get into it. I know I kinda drew this along if you're watching this video. This video, if you're a seasoned breeder and you've been breeding clutches for a long time, this video is probably not gonna be for you. I'm sure this video might be kinda redundant, but if you are a seasoned breeder, you can watch this through and let me know if I missed anything or if I spoke incorrectly. But if you're a new breeder, if maybe this is your first season, you're going into um, trying to get eggs from your female, this might be a good video just to kind of check out and see what I've learned um, and see some of the things that I've seen. So um, the last thing I'm gonna say before we jump right to the ovulation is that typically I would say comment below and let me know your thoughts on the video or something along those lines. But as you guys have seen, since I monetized the channel, um, most of my comments are disabled on it seems like all my future videos and almost all of my old videos, the comments were all uh, disabled. And so what I've learned is that I guess uh, YouTube has had some of their investors pull money due to the fact that people are commenting in videos that contain children. Um, so they're afraid of, um, they're trying to protect the innocence of the children by not letting predators on YouTube allow people to kind of use the comment section to either attack kids um, or possibly set them up for any type of like endangerment with like child pornography or things along those lines. So I think once uh, this issue was brought to YouTube and once they saw money getting pulled from their advertisers, they immediately just pulled comments on thousands of YouTube channels. And it seems like the channels were the monetized channels. And I think because they only, you know, I don't want to say they only care about the money, but if their ads are being pulled from the monetized videos, they're gonna immediately shut those comments off as a way to try to protect uh, children in videos. So even some of my videos that don't have my daughter in them, they're still shutting off the comments and there's no way to protest it or, or do anything. However, some channels were selected to keep their comments on. So, um, and I know that there's some uh, YouTube channels run by children, although they're probably run by their parents, 
their children based YouTube channels that are monetized with very large subscribers that their comments are still on. So I find it kind of funny that there's some children run YouTube channels that still have comments on. However, me as an adult who I run my channel, my comments were shut off. So, um, so anyway, so that's the story. So comments, I don't know if they're gonna be on on this video or not. Most likely probably not at the rate this is going, but let's jump into the ovulation. So this is what the ovulation looks like. All right, so one of the couple things that I wanted to show you with the ovulation, and remember this snake has not eaten in about, I would say four to five weeks. So when you look at her, pretty much from uh, this section here until about this section here, you could see how swollen, or at least I can, I hope you guys can kind of tell too, is how swollen that she is. She was kind of normal thickness, her whole body, everything was about the same thickness, and then all of a sudden here it starts to blow out and taper to the end. So a couple other things that I wanted to point out, so again, for me I'm always like, is this an ovulation, is it not? Like you're always looking for all these, these close calls or you know, you're looking for all these indicators. So one of the things I'll try to show you, again, I don't know if it's gonna come in, but if you could see on her scales, I'm, I'm gonna try to keep my fingers out of the shot so it focuses on her scales. You can almost see a little bit of white around each scale, even her spine scales, um, and in the side as well. All the scales are completely spread, so you'll start to actually see the white pigment in between the scales. So you start to see, I think right in here, if you look right in this area here, you'll see it the best. There's almost like white in between every single scale and that's never there. So if we go to a spot here where she's not blown out, let's see if we can focus. So you look at this part of her body, in here there's no white at all. You'd have to pull her apart so much to try to see the white. So then as you come down this way, you'll start to now see the white separation. So again, I hope you can kind of tell. So, so I look for that scale separation. There you go, you can see in here, all that whiteness that's coming in the sides. Um, a couple other things is, um, she gets like really, really hard. She's super stiff especially towards the end. So her body is extremely rigid and also her belly kind of curves up. So normally uh, this part in here lays flat on the ground and, and you can't really tell but it's kind of rolled up. So I can stick my finger underneath here. So she's rolled up and, not, and her belly isn't laying completely flat on the bottom. I think she's just coming over to check out what we're doing here. And the last thing that I've always kind of noticed or looked at, let me come around to this side, is I get this bend in the tail. This last little bit of the tail always bends. And if you try to straighten it out, it kind of slingshots back in. So even if I move her over a little bit, I feel bad doing this to her. But it doesn't want to like straighten out. She kind of fights it and it always, so even when I try to move it this way, now she's actually kind of doing it, but you'll see. And then if I leave her go in a few minutes, it just gets sucked and turned right back in just like this. So that last little bit's always turned at a sharp, you know, sharp angle. Every single ovulation that we've had has done that. Again, I think you see that scale separation, especially on the spine. Yeah, right in here really well. You can see all the white from all the scales being separated apart. You stay in here. Um, and the other thing that I've found, let's see if we can move her down get her head to go that way is I'll lift up the bottom of her tail and I'll show you underneath her skin and I didn't check yet but usually it gets like the, the her belly starts to suck in by her vent let me go on the other side let's see so it's hard to tell but right down the center of her belly towards her vent it kind of sucks in a little bit. It's as if like you're kind of pushing it down and it creates a little channel underneath. So again, that wasn't the best example of it. And I don't want to mess with her too much. So maybe we'll let her rest a little bit. But again, you can kind of see it down there, down this end. I think that's the best you're going to see. See how it sucks in the very center of her belly? Like right in here. 
So again, that's what the ovulation looks like. And what I was saying again, this part, this white in here normally lays on the ground. So this part here, let's see if I can focus it. This part here is like rolled up. Normally that part lays on the ground. So again, she's going. Another good side of that's all the scales separated in here. All right guys, so that's basically it. So I just wanted to show you um, kind of what the spider looks like, kind of some of the things that I've seen. Um, and it's, that's just all from my personal experience. Um, so I hope maybe this helps you guys going into the ovulation season. Uh, I know a lot of snakes are ovulating right now and I know a lot of people are getting clutches on the ground. So it's a pretty cool thing. This is the start of the season. I'm excited and good luck to all you people that are breeding your ball pythons out there. Thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time watching one of my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you like the content, hit the like button. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next vlog. Peace out, everybody.